All right, so um, what I want to review with you today is Odoo as it pertains to the workflow that Prashab recently shared with me. What we're going to do is we'll be referencing uh, these two screens quite often. So first step, first order of business here is uh, I want to preface with letting you know when I use the word sell order, it's uh, it's typically what you use to refer to as a purchase order. So any, uh, you know, we're going to use sell order to represent a request from a client to purchase goods from you. First order of business is to create a product titled the transponder module, which if we go here, I can see in my product catalog, we have a number of products created. The one we'll be going to focus on today is the transponder module. See up here the quantity that we have on hand currently. Click it, tells us product, the location it is, if it's reserved for an order or not, and of course what we have on hand. We'll have a bill of materials up here, which I believe is the next order of business, will be to create the bill of materials for the transponder module with these quantities of products uh, associated. If we go here, we'll see the bill of material. Open it up. We'll see here the products along with their corresponding quantities. We can define the operation in which each of these products get consumed within. Uh, all of the operations are defined here on the routing, which if we open this, I just created a very basic routing, stage one, stage two, work center, stage one, two, and then the average duration computes here based on you know, average is a second, of course, I'm just clicking through these in the demo. So, bill of materials confirmed, uh, just to make sure we domestic vendor, international vendor, we can open these up, we'll go back to our products, look at, for example, adhesive pieces purchasing from the domestic vendor, international vendor for the compartment, international for labels, domestic for tags. So, that's that. Um, create a reordering rule for the compartment and a transponder module which is already created. I'll show you the compartment here. Reordering rule already in place. Minimum maximum specified. OP is order point for this product. Minimum max specified here. If you have multi-location you can set reordering rules for particular locations as it pertains to this product. Um, things like that. Next, create a sale order from installer for product uh, transponder module. So we go to our sales, create a quote for the installer, add a product, transponder module. We'll see here, you want to see what we have in stock, you can do it either through here. You can see what you have on hand and what the forecasted is. Forecasted means what's available for sale. That's going to be the, uh, the go-to reference here because on hand you could have a hundred orders in pipe that are confirmed uh, you may have not shipped those yet the on hand will represent uh, the physical stock on hand whereas the forecasted will take into consideration all of those sales orders reserve quantities for them and show you what you have uh, forecasted left available for sale great and also if we try to add a product that's not in stock such as the compartment it will tell us here not enough inventory so, now that this is created, let's just make sure. So we looked up the transponder module, we saw what we have remaining in stock. Then step six will be, um, we'll have one in stock as we do. We'll issue this to the customer and want to verify a sale order has been updated to reflect that order has been fulfilled. So what we'll do here is once we confirm this, it's actually going to automatically reserve it. So if we remember when we looked at the transponder module, we saw that there was one forecasted quantity now when we do this, we've cre confirmed the sale, delivery order automatically generated. Get the transponder module here. Quickly, we'll see uh, forecaster on hand is zero. So keep in mind, every time a sale order gets confirmed, it's going to be managed via a delivery order. Um, the reason why we do it this way is because in some instances you may have back orders. Uh, it's going to make more sense to manage uh, this, keep one sale order and have many delivery orders opposed to trying to manage um, everything just via the sale order. So if we open this delivery order, you'll see the initial demand for the transponder module, the reserved quantity, what has been done, and then the status. It's ready to go. So folks in the inventory department, they'll see here we have one delivery order to do. 
of course it will be uh, for the one that we just created cell order number nine it's ready they can go in when they're ready and again they can barcode scan in and they'll valid you know print out the picking make sure they pick it from the correct place in stock um, and validate this send it out the door this has been just been marked as done everything gets logged here so user time stamped and this change that was made Going back to the sale order, sale order number nine, it's to invoice. And of course, you want to check the status of the delivery associated with this. Just one click away, it will tell you exactly what's going on. It was marked as done by Mitch Bossy, you know, a, a minute ago. So that's how we fulfill the uh, sale orders. And if we look at our inventory now, um, master data. We'll see here the transponder module, we have zero on hand and zero forecasted. Okay, so now um, this time the product will not be in stock. So we're gonna generate another set order for the transponder module. This time product will not be in stock. From here we will see the manufacturing order for this product get created automatically. Okay, so go back to our orders, create, for the installer transponder module, not enough in stock. Save this. When I confirm, delivery order gets generated. This time it's gonna look a little different. It's gonna say it's waiting. So nothing has been reserved yet either. Status down here is waiting. It's waiting in another operation. In Odoo, we have something called schedulers, which you wanna run these. When you run a scheduler, it's gonna automatically generate all procurements. Uh, you can choose to have these run on a set periods of time, or you can choose to have them just run continuously. In the demo, they run, uh, we're running them manually. Go into manufacturing, operations, we'll see here, transponder module. We have a MO created for this. Just like that. Now, we'll also see, um, Quickly, just to demonstrate to you as well, the purchasing, you'll see we have no RFQs created. The reason for this is because if we look at manufact the manufacturing, it's still uh, it's waiting availability. When I check availability here, it will generate the demand. And we'll see the compartment. We need to consume one, it's in red. We have zero reserved. We have enough of everything else. So when I go and run another, re uh, run the scheduler again, it's gonna generate the RFQ. There it is, RFQ generated for international vendor. Can you open this up. It's that, we'll see our compartment. We can confirm the purchase order. Again, we went through the pur purchase order. I can send it out by email to your vendor. They can confirm it. You'll, once you confirm it in the system, it generates the incoming shipment, place to do vendor bills. We'll just quickly receive these products. Just validate it. It'll bring it right into our stock. And now at this point, when you go to your manufacturing, the folks there will see upon checking availability that now this is available for us to proceed with. At this point, when I plan it, it'll push all work orders out into their proper queues, which from a dashboard perspective, let's say I work at, you know, I work at stage one. This is what I'll see on my dashboard. I can um, see what's ready to launch. I can tap in and see all my work orders. I have this one here. This is again like a tablet view, so you'd click this with your finger. You'd, uh, you'd start working on it if you want to here. Go back. You can also access it through here. More of a desktop version is in progress. It's this. So once I'm done, I mark it as done. It'll automatically send it to the next queue, which remember we defined the sequential movement of, this, of the work orders uh, in the routing. Same concept, go here, it's ready. Process it, market is done. At this point, all work orders will have been complete from a manufacturing standpoint. Here, you go in, you'll be able to, mar now market is done up here. It's available to market is done. Once I do this, it will move all product, all inventory moves, cost analysis, everything gets generated. So all the inventory moves that took place from my warehouse to my stop production, uh, I moved one tag. I moved two uh, 
labels and four pieces of adhesive. So that went from stock to production. From production to stock, I moved uh, one transponder module and then from stock to production also, I moved the, uh, the compartment. Also, you'll be able to see all the work orders that have been completed and also a cost analysis breakdown here of uh, the quantities, the unit costs, and then of course, the amount of time it took um, and the cost per hour, which I define on the routing in order to give us a unit cost of what it took to produce this particular transponder module. So, um, and now if I go into my uh, master data products, I'll see I have one transponder module on hand, just like that. Okay, so back here, since some MO has been generated, so has the demand for all the components. As we saw, we'll see a PO to our international vendor get created automatically. We saw that. I will val Once the MO is validated, this will send out all the work orders as we went over. As I process the work orders, the materials associated with this bill material were moved from stock and go to the production location. We witnessed that uh, with the inventory moves. Um, as, as you finish all these work orders, the MO will get validated, marked as done, and we'll have one quantity of transponder module uh, from production location in our stock. And then we'll see once it's in stock, I will see that I can now fulfill the delivery order associated with the set order. So last step here is to go to our inventory dashboard and uh, we'll see we still have one waiting, set order 10. And at that point, I'm able to check the availability and reserve it if I want to here for this, uh, for this order. If you want to have it automatically associate this, uh, that manufacturing uh, transponder, mo that manufactured transponder module with this particular set order, you're going to want to make it as a, you're going to want to schedule it as make to order on the, uh, on the product template. Uh, that will make sure that that particular order was manufactured for that particular, that particular, excuse me, uh, manufacturing job was run for this particular set order. Right now, with what we have it said, it's just generating demand. So that means we have to reserve it. And once I do this, I can validate and apply, sends it out the door to my uh, customer. And again, you'll be able to print your pickings before that delivery slips, etc. From a sales perspective, sell order 10, you can invoice it. You can also go up here to see orders to invoice. You'll see I have a whole bunch of them. Select action, you can invoice all these orders if you want, uh, etc. So. That is, in a nutshell, how we are able to fulfill these requests out of the box in our software. Um, let me know if you have any additional questions or if anything that I've just reviewed here is at all unclear. I'm happy to, to drill deeper into, into how things work or explain things uh, in more detail. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time and I uh, hope you enjoy the video.